What did you know about artificial intelligence and Watson before IBM suggested it might make a contribution in medical care? I, not much, actually. I um, had watched it play Jeopardy. Yes. You know, I knew about that. Uh, and I was very skeptical. I was like, oh, this is what we need, the Jeopardy playing computer. That's going to solve everything. So what fed your skepticism? Yeah. Cancer's tough business. There's a lot of false profits and false promises. So I'm skeptical of sort of almost any new idea in cancer. Um, I just didn't really understand what it would do. What Watson's AI technology could do is essentially what Dr. Sharpless and his team of experts do every week at this molecular tumor board meeting. We need to figure this out. They come up with possible treatment options for cancer patients who already fail standard therapies. They try to do that by sorting through all of the latest medical journals and trial data, but it is nearly impossible to keep up. I don't think there's a trial open yet. To be on top of everything that's out there, all the trials that are taking place around the world, it seems like an incredible task for any one university or one, one facility to do. Yeah, it's, it's essentially undoable. And, and understand, we have sort of 8,000 new research papers published every day. You know, no one has time to read 8,000 papers a day. So we found that we were deciding on therapy based on information that was always, in some cases, 12, 24 months out of date. However, it is a task that's elementary for Watson. You know, they taught Watson to read medical literature, essentially, in about a week. It was not very hard. And then Watson read 25 million papers in about another week. And uh, then it also scanned the web for uh, clinical trials open at other centers. And all of a sudden, we had this complete list that was sort of everything one needed to know. Did this blow your mind? Oh, it totally blew my mind. 